Welcome. In this session, we're going to talk about planner downforce and the importance of setting it correctly. We'll go over row unit physics, namely margin, and the three components that play a part in margin, namely the weight of the row unit, the downforce applied, as well as the resistance from the soil. Downforce impacts many things, including the trench sidewall, our ride quality, our singulation, our seed spacing, namely that coefficient of variation value, keeping that below that 0.35, ground contact, emergence, and most importantly, yield. Based on a study done by the University of Minnesota on a 200 bushel the acre plot, these four things contributed to impacts of yield. We look at the biggest one being uniform emergence at 10 to 18 bushels to the acre. Now, downforce plays an integral part of uniform emergence, being able to place the seed at the same seed depth all the way through the field, allowing those plants to emerge at the same time. So why downforce matters? Well, it's important to remember that we need the downforce to keep that root unit in the ground to keep the correct seed depth at all times. Now it's going to vary from field to field and soil conditions, but we need to sit, remember to set that correctly uh, for each field. Too little downforce is going to cause some real unit hop, poor ride quality. The openers could even rise out of the ground, so there's poor ground contact. The improper firming of the seed furrow or the seed depth could be varying seed depth across rows even. Too much downforce could cause excessive wear on our openers and gauge wheel bearings, as well as the shear rivets on the hub. Uh, but most importantly, it will cause compaction of the seed trans sidewalls, uh, resulting in poor root growth, uh, not allowing those roots to uh, get to the nutrients that they need, or having to go uh, and work really hard uh, around to find it. So correct downforce setting. Uh, we want to see that defined trench, uh, no loose soil with seed, as well as we're looking for that consistent depth. So it's easy to do that if you have the closing wheels either tied up or removed uh, to see our spacing as well as the correct seed depth. Here's another picture of the correct downforce setting. We should see the uniform emergence throughout the field when the stands do come up, showing that we had our correct downforce set. Too little downforce is going to result in the inconsistent depth. Uh, could even mean that the seed is actually applied on top of the soil if the openers come out of the ground. Uh, we know that more speed requires more downforce, so we've got to keep that in mind when setting downforce. Uh, the trench can cave in, we have that loose seed with the soil, which in turn causes that poor seed to soil contact. And kind of shown in the picture up there, that sidewall might be crumbling, uh, so there could be pockets of air and soil not resulting in a good seed to soil contact. Just another picture of the downforce being too little. We can see that our seed depth varied, causing one plant to be way ahead of the others. And these two here in the picture really at that point are kind of considered weeds because the one is stealing a lot more nutrients from the other two. And once again, we go back to, uh, based on that study done by the University of Minnesota, that uniform emergence is key into playing a critical part into improving yield. So too much downforce, we can see peeling from the gauge wheels. Um, we see this poor root formation in the um, see how that's really compressed and that root will not be able to penetrate into the soil as easily and it cause a lot more energy. And a lot of times when we're putting fertilizer down, uh, those roots definitely need to go and search for that fertilizer as well as the nutrients that uh, the soil provides for that seed. And so too much downforce is, is really going to inhibit growth uh, from the get-go. So we can see that it'll kind of be difficult for roots to develop. We can see roots, they're just kind of trying to go down the actual seed trench here instead of branching out as much as they should. 
So now we're going to talk about how downforce is calculated. There's mainly three forces that go into this equation. The row unit weight, which is usually consistent in a CCS planner. It can vary in a box planner due to the amount of seed in the seed box. Then we have the applied downforce, whether that's mechanically driven or airbag or hydraulic. And that usually remains constant depending on whether the operator changes that or not. And then we have the soil resistance. Now the soil resistance can change depending on field conditions. So the goal is to get the right amount of force that the gauge wheels apply to the soil. This force is called the margin. To calculate the margin, you add the downforce being applied to the row unit weight, then subtract the resistance. So to kind of put it in an equation, we can look that downforce that is applied to the row unit, we could say there's 200 pounds, and then we can say the weight of the row unit is 100 pounds, and the resistance from the soil to the blades is 150 pounds. So if we want to look at what the margin is, we simply add up the 200 and 100 and subtract the 150. So we're at 150 pounds of margin. So once again, margin is the additional downforce required to get to the correct seed depth and stay there. So now we'll go through just quickly the types of downforce that are available. We still offer mechanical springs on a limited number of planters. Uh, there are pretty much four settings listed above. We have a pneumatic downforce, which is just an airbag on each row, and you can have infinite settings between zero and uh, 400 pounds. It can be standard or integrated with a display. If it's standard, uh, you're going to set the compressor knob and the, you turn the operator turns the switch on and off and monitors the gauge. If it's integrated or in the Seed Star 2 system, the operator can actually control uh, the target downforce on the screen. And then we have set point pneumatic downforce. You can once again control it on the display and the operator can monitor the row unit ride and quality. And this is found in Seed Star XP. Uh, you can also enter the target downforce and then the controller uh, takes care of the valves to control the air. Then we have the active pneumatic downforce system where the display then reads in margin, not set point. Then there's gauge wheel sensors on a certain number of rows that tell us the load on those gauge wheels to get feedback from what the soil is doing. And then the controller will automatically activate the valves, whether it's to fill or to dump. Uh, to control that air to stay at our margin value that the operator has set. And we once again have the individual row hydraulic downforce. And this is every single row that the downforce is controlled on. There's gauge wheel sensors on every row, as well as the ride quality, the ground contact. Um, that is monitored for every single row as well. Uh, the operator still enters the target margin and then the controller activates the solenoids to control the oil pressure in each actuator. Uh, there are on-screen diagnostic tests that go with this system, and it is not recommended for 6R or uh, interim tier 4 or 7R tractors. The big difference is in the name is individual row compared to our active pneumatic downforce. Active pneumatic still works in margin where it's going to change uh, the amount of downforce as the seed soil resistance varies. However, it goes as an average across the whole planter, whereas the individual row hydraulic downforce will control each row separately. Just kind of an overview page of the individual row hydraulic downforce systems and how each of those monitors for the downforce as well as the margin. Downforce, we talk about the set point versus active. So set point, you set a number and that does not react to changes in fuel conditions. In this case, they're showing a set point of 200 pounds. So that planter is always going to be putting an additional 200 pounds down. It doesn't care uh, what kind of ground you're in. It's always putting that down. There's instances where you might not be getting 
the seed at correct depth uh, at times, or if you have some really mellow soil, you could be getting it, the downforce you could be applying too much. So that's where this active in our margin system comes in, where it, we set the margin and then our valves will control that planter where whether it needs to um, increase the downforce or decrease the downforce based on soil conditions. So all downforce systems, they can be operated on a set point basis, but only the active pneumatic and the individual row hydraulic downforce can be monitored on the active basis. So kind of to wrap up, just want to talk about the downforce physics and margin a little bit more. So we can see here in this diagram, we have plenty of things that are, are forces that are going down. So in this picture, it says airbag, but that could also be a hydraulic cylinder or mechanical spring. Uh, we have our seed hopper, as well as the weight of the row unit uh, shank. Then we have the sole here and everything that's pushing back up against. So right here, the weight on the gauge wheels, just in a, in a picture view here, that is what the margin is, is the weight on the gauge wheels. Once again, it's the additional force required to push down in order to achieve planting depth. And then the amount depends on fuel conditions as well as speed. Like I said before, the faster you go, the more downforce you'll need to keep this whole row unit in the ground and not want to come back up. The other thing that can play a part in the downforce selection is our closing wheels. So these closing wheels have an upforce as well because they have resistance to soil. So if we set those more firm, what that does, it acts like a lever and it's going to take and pick this row unit up out of the ground. So we'll need more downforce. Same thing if we had uh, row cleaners of some sort up in front, the further down we set them, it's still gonna act as a lever and pick this whole row unit out of the ground. So we're gonna need more downforce going down to achieve our consistent seed to soil contact in our seed trench to keep that consistent how we want to look at. So hopefully now you can understand why downforce is important and why you should take time to set it in the field and constantly monitor it as you go.